All right, we are now live on Instagram. And on Facebook. Hey, everybody. Nobody's here yet. Hi, Hi Sarah. Hi, Hillary. How are you today? I'm good. How are you today? Excellent. You're looking lovely. Thank you so much. And your favorite <laughs> teal color. I like that you um, chose some sparkles and glitter to go with your outfit. I did. Yes. <laughs> I can't help it. Everything's teal. <laughs> There's a reason my six-year-old room is teal. <laughs> All right, I got some people. people yeah, we've got Instagram. some people joining. Sarah says hi. Double Sarah. <laughs> oh, Sarah squared. <laughs> Is it spelled the right way? All right. I don't know. <laughs> well, we are here today to learn about all the different edible uh, glitters and dusts that we carry here at the Cookie Countess. I think there's um, a lot there. We get a lot of questions about what's the difference. So we thought we would dedicate today to answer some of those questions and showing you visibly the difference. All right. So we'll start with my favorite, which is sparkle dust. And I have a very hard time not adding this to every single cookie I make. Um, and we carry the biggest assortment of sparkle dusts um, as opposed to the others. So I have a nice little setup here so you can see some of the different ones. Um, we have really edible glitter. Um, this one is called Flash Dust, our Sweet Sticks Sparkle Dust that we only carry in gold, and Roxy and Rich Sparkle Dust, both in the pumps and in the little tubs. Um, sparkle Dust is fantastic for adding just that, some sparkle. So if you want to finish off your cookie with some glitz and glamour, Sparkle Dust is the way to go. It doesn't have a ton of pigment, so if you are looking to paint with something, there are better options than sparkle dust, but adding some glitz to your cookies, you can add this when you're stenciling, you can add it just to the whole cookie, um, airbrush, royal icing, whatever you like, this is a really great option. So I'm gonna stencil a cookie so you can see how it adheres for you. Um, so I just picked a great standard background. We've got our mini buffalo plaid, which is always a favorite. And I'm just gonna cover it with some um, uncolored royal icing so we can see how it sticks. So I think, um, let me guys, let uh, you guys have to connect. So I think we might be having some connection issues on Facebook. Um, I don't think we are on Instagram. You can always pop over to Instagram and pick up where we where you left off. I'm sorry about that. Um, we're doing the best we can over here with technology, but uh, just bear with us and um, we'll do what we can. We also will repost this to uh, YouTube afterwards and on our website. Okay. Sorry, Sarah. That's just wanted right. to no, make we'll that PSA. First, we want to let them know. <laughs> All right. So I just got some plain, uncolored, stiff royal icing here to stencil with. So I'm going to just stencil right onto my cookie. I'm going to add a nice smear of icing going all the way to the edges. So like Hillary said in her last one, you want to make sure that you coat all the way to the edges so you're filling all the areas of the stencil. It's going to get messy along the edges. That's just kind of the nature of the beast. And give her a little, a little scrape. Now when you are going to spray glitter onto your... Um, stencil if, with royal icing in particular, you want to make sure that you have enough scraped off that when you lift the stencil away, the stencil doesn't pull all that um, glittered icing with it. I kind of take off more than I usually would when I do it this way. So I've got a couple of different um, colors. You want to do this while the icing is wet, obviously. Okay, so we'll do some gold and we on one side, and this is my absolute favorite gold glitter by Sweet Sticks. It's the Vegas Gold. Uh, comes in a larger pump bottle, and it actually is very powerful. So just spritz it right onto the wet icing, and you want to make sure you have good coverage. If you're close to it, it'll hit more precisely, but if you're trying to cover your entire stencil, backing off a little bit will be a better bet. And then I've got a violet from Roxy and Rich. Now this is going to add a little bit of color to the stencil. Oh, I love that color. That's Isn't pretty. pretty. And I'm just going to jump in and just remind everybody, everything we do sell is edible. This is not yes. disco dust. Um, so everything you find on the cookie counters is an edible glitter. Correct. So now I'm going to peel this away. Boop. Ooh. Ooh. 
Oh, <laughs> that's so pretty, that's Sarah. Sarah. And then you would just come in. Don't worry about those edges. Just come in with your thingamajini or whatever mini spatula you've got and clean up those edges. But you've that's got a gorgeous. pretty... I love um, spraying edible glitter onto black royal icing. I think it's fantastic. The color that you get, it's a little more vintagey looking um, because that black background really makes it pop. So mm. That's pretty. I like the two-tone also. Yeah, actually, it does look nice on yeah. this, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it looks really pretty. Nice. So that is Sparkle Dust. Now, again, I mentioned we have several different brands of Sparkle Dust. Um, just some quick comparison in particular. I dumped a little bit out of these three brands. Now, the Really Edible Glitter and the Flash Dust are both made by the same company called Never Forgotten Designs. It is based in the United States. It's a little bit grittier, not gritty, it's very fine, I will say, but it's a little bit um, more like disco dust, right? That, that thicker mm -hmm. um, particle where the Roxy and Rich tends to be a little bit finer. It's a little finer powder. So it really depends on the look you're trying to go for. Do you want that, you know, extra blinged out look that the, the larger, slightly, slightly larger particles might get you? Or do you want that really fine powder? But they all add a gorgeous amount of shimmer and color. Um, mm, pretty. They're so pretty. What's this color? I like this one. This one is their um, turquoise candy. Pretty. All of the flash dusts are named They're after good. different kinds of candy. So, <laughs> um, And they're kosher, they're vegan. So um, definitely, if you, those are concerns, this is, these are great options. Um, the Roxy and Rich is Hillary. Oh, Hillary. sorry. I was, <laughs> I was reading and I was bringing my, I'm sorry. I was reading the question. Um, okay. Can you pipe on the glitter afterwards? Um, yes. So I'd like say. on your buffalo plaid. Yeah. Once this is dry, you should be able to pipe onto it. If your icing is super stiff and doesn't have any moisture in it, if, when you lift your tip away, it might want to come away if it's not, if there's not enough moisture to make it want to stick to the cookie. Mm. Um, but yes, you can definitely pipe on top. That of makes that. sense. So yeah. Because it'll be more of a dry surface. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's, and especially if you really lay down a heavy layer of glitter, where it's, that's what's on top. <laughs> you might you're gonna wanna have to shake some of that off if you go too heavily, because <laughs> it's the icing that you add to the top won't wanna stick to it. Um, oh, and then one other thing about flash dust in particular, which is these guys right here, um, it is made with all natural colors. So there's no red 40, there's nothing like that. So if that is a concern for you, flash dust is the way to go because it does not have any of those um, man-made colorants. Um, and they can also be added to drinks. So if you want to mix it into, we do carry one that is meant specifically to be meant, uh, put in drinks, but the flash dust and the really edible glitter both can be added to candy, can be added to, um, to drinks as well. Okay, any questions about? I don't have any. Sparkle dusts. Um, one other thing is that some of these sparkle dusts, so specifically the sweet sticks and the Roxy and Rich come preloaded in these pump bottles. Roxy and Rich gives you two different options um, for which pump you want to use. If you know that you're gonna go through a lot of a color, maybe get the bigger bottle. Um, that comes in this, um, the Super Pearl and the Gold. Super Pearl is my favorite to have on hand no matter what because it doesn't have any color in and of itself. So it can be sprayed on top of anything and it'll give a really great effect without adding any color. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. So pretty. You can never have enough glitter, right? I mean. <laughs> if you ever wanted to feel like a twilight vampire stepping out into the sunlight, <laughs> get some sparkle dust. <laughs> this is going to be a messy day for me. <laughs> All right. We're going to make you go outside and like yes. twirl around <laughs> so you can be our personal disco ball later. <laughs> um, so next up will be luster dust. So a lot of people will confuse luster dust with sparkle dust and vice versa. Um, and Roxy and Rich does make luster dust as well. And they very conveniently give different colored lids to all of their products so that you can tell at a glance whether you have sparkle dust or luster or fawn dust. So the luster dust 
just as it says in the name, it adds a little bit of a luster. It's more of a sheen. So if I am trying to paint on a cookie and I want to leave a little bit of a shimmery finish without being full on sparkle, luster dust is the way to go. Um, so I have kind of pre-made a little bit of a sample for you guys. I don't know if you can see it as I tip the stripes a little bit, but there is a little bit of a shimmer to these. Pretty. And of course, you know, I had to do the teal, Hillary. Of course, you know. yes. Wait, which one's teal? <laughs> No. It's funny. On my phone, it looks more like... It does look straight blue. Yeah, mm -hmm. it doesn't look as teal. <laughs> um, so this is a the luster dust. So now if you want to paint luster dust onto a cookie, you can do it in a couple of different ways. You can either dry dust it um, and just buff it into your cookie, into the surface of your cookie with a nice fluffy round tipped brush I find works the best if I'm buffing it into a cookie to just leave that shimmer behind. Um, or you can paint it on with a high proof alcohol. So um, here in New England, we have our tiny little bottles of alcohol. <laughs> I'm gonna put just a little bit in my paint palette here. You don't need much. What I will say is if you're using something like Everclear or a high um, proof grain alcohol, that tends to want to evaporate quickly. So you may want to move quickly or just continue adding more to your, um, your little circle. Now, let me grab a luster dust. We're going to go with carrots because I have not already worked with that one on this cookie. So you can make this in a couple of different ways. You can either, thank you, you can pour some right into your palette and then you can mix this straight into here, depending on how you want to work with it. I just want to make one tiny stripe of it. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit with my wet brush. I don't want to necessarily waste all this powder if I'm not going to use it. And then I'm just going to paint right onto my cookie. I can add some more color. And again, you want to work with a high proof alcohol because it has less tendency to sit on your cookie and pit and eat away at the icing. All right. That's so pretty. What a great mm -hmm. color. You can get some really vivid colors out of the luster mm. dust, but you also still get that resulting shimmer and sheen behind, um, which is great. And that just remind people about yeah. using alcohol that it evaporates. Yeah, absolutely. So the reason that you're using a high proof alcohol is that it does evaporate. It won't leave the taste behind. It won't sit on the surface of your cookie long enough to make an impact other than that you are able to paint your color on. Um, some people will use anything else like a uh, clear vanilla extract or lemon extract, things that are also clear that won't add color, um, but also have that alcohol base. Um, somebody said, what's a good type of hybrid alcohol like you mentioned? Hybrid alcohol? Um, I, high, high proof. I'm high sorry. proof. High, high proof. proof. Alcohol. Um, if your state has it, you can use Everclear. Um, some states don't allow the sale of that, so just look for the highest proof you can find. Grain alcohol um, tends to be very high. Um, they're very comparable. Um, this is just vodka, so um, this is what I happen to have on hand here in the kitchen here. So that's what I use to paint here. Mm -hmm. Diana uh, says, pro tip, don't stage your sample cook cookie picks with a big bottle of Everclear in the background. <laughs> mm, good tip. But we're not going to ask her how she knows that. So, yeah. And uh, this will be available, yes, afterwards. So if you need to pop out or if there is a connection issue, just as a reminder, this will be on both Instagram and Facebook, and we will repost to YouTube after this is over as well. Um, so the next type of dust, also made by Roxy and Rich, is petal dust. So petal dust, just as in its name, is great for working on um, like sugar flowers, fondant, anything like that that you want to leave. Um, you can dry dust this on just like you can the luster dust, um, but it leaves a matte finish. So I used a little bit, I can do another one, but I grabbed one of these sugar flowers I had made before and I just took a dry brush and kind of um, went along like took a little bit of color and just did this move to give my, my flower a little bit of a center 
color emanating. Um, if I wanted to use, again, I can use my alcohol and paint it on. Let me grab a little bit of that. So this is the same color. This is the Petal Dust in Cosmos. If I just take, again, my, my wet brush, and this time I grab a little bit of color, it goes on a little bit differently. See how it's a full paint instead of mm -hmm. just that blushing center color? Mm -hmm. Now this will dry matte. So if you're looking for sparkle or shimmer, this is not the way to go, but you can certainly spritz it with a sparkle dust after the fact if you want to. Um, but if you want to start with that, do luster. But if you're just trying to get some extra color, do petal dust. Petal dust is also really great if you dust it on with a small round brush um, for cheeks. So if you're making snowmen or something that needs like a little- um, All those Easter bunnies we just made. <laughs> Um, then this is the way to go. And this is probably the color I would use, honestly. <laughs> um, going back to the liquids, um, yeah. would you recommend using like an extract, like lemon extract in place of the vodka? Extract, they yeah. can't find, yeah. okay. Yeah, some people cho do choose to use um, an extract. Okay, so, so that would work the same as the um, It might not similar. work exactly the same because it may not have the same evaporation speed, but it should still work for you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so that is Petal um we have one color set of colors i'm not going to actually demo it but we do carry it again by roxy and rich this is their fat dispersible colors so if you work with chocolates and you need to add color to your white chocolate this is the way to go you can add this directly into your melted white chocolate and give it a stir and it will not cause your chocolate to seize so this is a really great option. Um, people have been looking for this for a long time, so I'm really glad we got this in. Um, so if you do um, chocolate-covered Oreos or anything like that and you need um, to color them, these are great. They are five gram um, little tubs, and I will tell you that some of the colors weigh more than others. So if you get a container of white and you're like, oh, it looks way less, it's actually because the white weighs so much more. So interesting. Interesting. Um, somebody said they love these lives, the conversations with the Countess. <laughs> Yay! I'm the Countess Apprentice. Uh, <laughs> <so> <laughs> All right, and then my last um, specific one is going to be called Fawn Dust, and I brought gloves for this one because I do not oh, want yeah. to have nicely colored hands today. Um, quick question before yeah. you go on to Fawn Dust. Can you paint chocolate with the chocolate... Um, uh, with the dust, like just dust, not mixed into the chocolate. Um, I don't know the answer to I don't that. Know the answer okay, to that. I think we've and tried that. You have the... to activate it somehow. Yeah, um, and adding water to it will not work um, on the chocolate because it'll just beat up on there. Um, I don't work with chocolate a whole lot, and Will's not here today for us to frantically call her. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if you can add. I mean, I'm sure you could add. Everclear or vodka to this and make a mix of paint. I just don't know whether it would yeah. set on the chocolate. That's the only well, maybe we could try that out sometime. Mm. Yeah, we can use that to test. We'll get back to you. All right, so <laughs> Fondust. I think Fondust is so cool. Fondust is <laughs> the coolest. Um, so Fondust is a no water required powder that you can add to, directly to your fondant. And you just basically massage it in I'm going to, this is going to be a little sparkly too, because that's what I have. Uh, okay, so this is Roxy and Rich Fawn Dust. And one of my favorite things about this is that the colors very often don't look like what it's going to turn into. This is going to be maple green. So okay. even though it looks brown. So trust the label. Trust the process. Yeah. Trust the process. <laughs> so we're going to add a little bit. If you have a tiny little spoon, you can work, you know, figure out what you need. And then you're just going to start massaging it in. Oh. You can see the color developing. Oh yeah. So we'll give this a good, a good massage. You can see the color already starting to build. And so again, these are all 100% edible, um, not non-toxic. So these are perfectly fine to eat. And they don't change the flavor. Nope, there's no flavor that's gonna be left behind. Yeah, these work great because if you try to use a gel color on fondant to change the color, you'll end up with like tacky. A sticky mess. Yeah, it's yeah. not great. <laughs> so this is dry, no water added. Just give it a good massage until you reach, you know, full distribution. 
and you're you can you know certainly if you get like a marbling going and you like that go for it um, but this gives you a really nice it's pretty color yeah that. really different from what was in the jar so different right yeah. like the first time i opened this color right. in particular i was <laughs> looks like, you know, like about to call roxy food. rich but, <laughs> but it does really make such a difference so there's our nice green fondant pretty Beautiful. Yeah, that's wow. That really happened fast. <laughs> <laughs> that escalated quickly. <laughs> Love it. Uh, I'm caught up over here on questions. Yeah, no questions for me. Good. Um, I think I think that's kind of it. Those that's are the it. dust that we carry. Um, with the fractal dust, again, it's mostly preference unless you um, need it to be all natural colors, in which case, again, go for that flash dust. So that's this one. That's that one. We do sell the extra bottle shakers, on, or I'm sorry, the pumps on our website. Um, so if you have the flash dust, which comes... <laughs> <laughs> this is like yeah this. this is an empty one that the she filled flash dust um comes in a little shaker style bottle okay so i find this a lot messier to be honest just like the tubs are a little messier um but so if you're sprinkling it all over the whole thing i would personally buy the empty bottles and mm -hmm. just transfer it into that um nice and easy and you do need a special dust bottle mm -hmm. you can't just put this in a regular spray spritz bottle just know and that. And you also want to make sure that you're not adding any liquid to it. I've had customers ask me that before. Should I add liquid into the bottle to spray it on? But that will clog the pump. Emily, you have a question? Um, can you paint on the fondant with the sparkle dust with vodka mixed sure. in? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Anything you can do with fondant normally, you can um, certainly do with, with the paints that you created. Again, sparkle dust doesn't leave behind a ton of color. So if you want it to be pigmented, I would go with either the luster or petal dusts and make a paint from those. Um, but the um, the sparkle dust will leave some pretty sparkle behind. Right. Um, Darlene is asking, I'm, I'm assuming she's talking about fond dust. Can it be mixed in to royal icing? Can fond dust be yes, mixed it royal can. Um, I believe so. Yeah, I, I have. Get the, the same color payoff. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, in a pinch, though, yeah. you could. Um, um, no, you, when you put it in the spray bottle, you don't mix it with anything, Perfect. Jennifer. Yeah. Just keep that dry. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and then the other reason why you might just choose one over the other brand or the other is just a color thing. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Cause they all have different colors. They all come in such pretty color. I mean, they're huge lines of colors. So all of them have a, a huge assortment available. Um, but like you said, if you just have a preference of one versus the other. So this again. Yep. This is so pretty. Love that. All right. So thanks, Sarah. You're that so was very welcome. educational. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> In the interest of education, we will be back next week. Ooh. We have All right. some more plans for a panel conversation, I think. So we're going to ask you guys to submit some questions. Um, and we're going to, Emily will get that up and running, uh, yes. a method of contact for us, but we'd like you to submit your questions to us that we might be able to help you answer. So if you have questions about airbrushing or something about Royal icing, or even if it's something we've already gone over before, um, we're happy to revisit because if you have a question, chances are somebody else has the question. And what it's going to be myself, Hillary and Sarah and Will. Oh, so okay. the three of us will be able to give our opinions and uh, they might be different. Yep. So feel, you know, if you have something you want to know, well, how would you approach this order or, you know, I mean, you'll have the benefit of three different, three different masterminds. <laughs> there might be a debate. There might be a debate. Ooh, yeah. Can we, can we have a debate? Um, yeah. So we're going to post, we'll make a separate post for you to post those questions for next week's live. And then uh, we'll also give you our email address. If you would like to send us a video or pictures of something you want help on, we would love to help you out in that way as well. So that's for next week on yes some good questions yes we're here we'll for you questions. we'll post that later today <laughs> yes awesome all right all right guys thanks so much for coming thank I'm you welcome. sarah you're welcome thank bye. you bye <laughs>